In our final scenario, we'll explore how limited dual agency with and without assigned agents is handled in a brokerage setting. Although teams are depicted in this scenario, the same responsibilities and risk reduction techniques apply to brokerages, branch offices, teams, groups, and other organizational structures. In this scenario, our broker is counseling with agents Jill and Tom, who each run a team within the brokerage. Jill, Tom, um, I've asked you to meet with me today to discuss some issues I see with your teams when it comes to limited dual agency. Our team um, specializes in working with buyers, so this isn't a problem for us. When we're contacted by a seller, we just refer them to another team. Well, actually, that's exactly what I'm talking about. The agency contract is between a buyer, seller, and the brokerage, not a buyer, seller, and a particular agent or team. So anytime the buyer and seller are both represented by the brokerage, even if it's on different teams, the relationship is a limited dual agency relationship. Oh, that's why my contracts keep getting sent back to me corrected. Yes, and uh, that's why I've brought a few contracts here as examples. Now, on this first contract, Jill, option A has been selected for both the buyer and the seller in the representation confirmation section. However, Tom's team is working with the seller and your team is working with the buyer. But isn't that correct? My team is working with the buyer as a client, so we select option A. And since the seller's rep is from Tom's team and is working exclusively with the seller, that would also be option A, right? No. Uh, the only time option A would be selected for both parties is when the brokerage is working with either the buyer or the seller as a client and another brokerage is working with the other party. If the brokerage is working with one party as a customer and the other as a client, then option D would be selected for the customer and option A for the client. Now, if our brokerage is working with both the buyer and the seller as clients, then option B or C would be the correct selection depending on whether agents have been assigned. I guess we hadn't been looking at it that way. I'll make sure to set my team right on that. Great. Now, in this second contract, it looks like option B has been selected for the buyer and option C for the seller. That means one side is working with an assigned agent and the other isn't. Now, can either of you tell me why that would not be correct? Wouldn't both the buyer and seller either be working with assigned agents or neither one? It seems like, from what you said before, it can't be mixed. That's right. In this case, a member of Jill's team was working with the buyer as an assigned agent, and a member of your team was working with the seller as an assigned agent. That means the correct option for both buyer and seller should have been C. Okay, so let me see if I've got this now. If I was personally double ending a deal, then I'd select B and B because I'm working for both the buyer and the seller without any assigned agents. Yes. I think you see what the problem is now. Mm -hmm. Now, if you ever need help with which option to select on the representation confirmation section, please let me know.